out here in Gilbert, Arizona at Freestone Park today on a hot summer morning. Going to launch another plastic rocket palooza. Here's the, the load for the day. I'm not sure if I'll get all these up, but these are definitely ones that can survive this massively hard pan gravel. Got a little, what I call park flyer. It was a Skyhawker rocket that disintegrated and I rebuilt and repainted and stickered. So just a little A83 number going up to uh, get the waters chummed for uh, launching here. Um, should be just a couple hundred feet. So sky's clear, range is clear, going in five, four, three, two, one. perfect flight. I'm going to be using a new launcher today. A refurbished box that I got from a Rocketry Works event, our Desert Heat. Um, wasn't working so I reconnected all the wires and put new batteries in it and it's going to be fun to use. Got an Epix two-stage on the pad, going up on an A85, well, 880, an A85 for second stage. These are always fun. Last time I launched this, I put two A80s in it. You can imagine how that worked out, but no, it lawn darted, but survived nicely. This is the third flight on this, this rocket. Range and sky are clear. Going up in five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, that A eight three. Oh, here it comes. Bonk. The, uh, looks like the streamer did not eject. So it got a little bit of crunchy top. Well, it's part of the fun. All right, well, we'll cut the top off that and fly it again later. Too bad the rest of the rocket didn't land like this. First stage of the Epics land perfectly. Ready to go again. It's like, hey, I'm ready. Where's my flight mate? <laughs> Sorry, dude, he's sick. Well, the problem with the Epics flight was I had wadding in there already, probably from the last flight that nose dived in when I put two A8 zeros in instead of an A85 and an A80. So I had four, five pieces of wadding in there. That could be the reason why the uh, streamer didn't eject. 
launch number two of the Epics with a little bit of a field repair, cut the nose off, sanded it down, fit the nose cone back on, put the right amount of wadding in there, A8, zero to A8, three. Going in five, four, three, two, one. Yep, we got the streamer out this time. Amazing what the right amount of wadding will do. Did not stick the landing this time with the first stage, but it got messed up. I flew a so long rocket not too long ago this is all i got back of that and it did the same thing it just mangled the booster stage um, and never got the rocket back so i kind of wanted to fly a two-stage or small scale kind of make up for the loss of that big thing but here it is and worked like a charm this time <laughs> practice makes perfect time to launch my 20 year old Guardian with a camera on it on a B64. There's a little bit of a breeze today that's come up, so this thing should track straight back from the view of this shot here. So let's put it up, see what happens. All right, Guardian with the camera going up in five, four, three, two, one. camera should be recording lots of nice pictures of all this dirt <laughs> and it tracked exactly where I wanted it to based on the wind starting to get good at this model rocketry thing Three, two one And laid out just like they show in those model rocketry magazines. Perfect flight. Next up is a showstopper. I painted the tube and left the showstopper logo off. But it's what it is, this kit. It's plastic, mostly. 
have a C113 motor in it. I have an altimeter in it. Brand new altimeter, first time used. My last one was on my So Long rocket that went so long. Um, I'm sure that thing's out of batteries by now. This is a fresh battery. <laughs> and a thin mill 15 inch chute. Nice and bright green. Should be able to be very well spotted. The breeze has kicked up here a little bit. I wish this thing was a on a 3 16th inch rod. There's gonna be a lot of rod whip with this big rocket, but uh, we'll launch it anyway. Showstopper going up in five, four, three, two, one. Green shoot shows up marvelously. I need a leader on it though. glasses on a little extra piece of a tumbleweed I don't think I'll launch that next time oh I forgot to mention too this has a baffle in it those things work great blue like a champ just had a visit from the Gilbert Park Ranger Trevor came to see what I was up to I assured him that I was following all the NAR rules let him know my experience in model rocketry and that I recognize that uh, him dealing with idiots doing this is a bad thing, that we work hard to make sure that uh, we fly safe and clean. He appreciated that. I made a new friend in rocketry at the uh, official level today, and uh, it's always a good thing. Got a Dragonite going up on a C-12 uh, Q-Jet motor. Six, six second delay, got an altimeter in here. These little Dragonites, they're snapped together. They fly awesome. And then uh, we'll see, wind's blowing still a little bit, but everything's tracking the same direction with lots of field for recovery. Using these new alligator clips I put on this launcher, these things are two and a half inch clips and they make a huge difference from the Estes clips that are smooth and weak. These things clam onto those things. Uh, the igniter wire is really tight. They're not too heavy. If this ground wasn't hard, I'd have a pole in here to provide some leverage, keep the weight off of the igniter wires, but this seems to be working well. Drag and I going up on a C12 6FJ Q-Jet motor with an altimeter on a breezy day, wind to my back. The rocket should travel in all the field straight out from the pad here. And we are going in five, four, three, two, one. that put it up there. <laughs> I have a spill hole in the uh, chute. Oh. 
Oh dear. All right, Dragonite back, but missing the fin can. <laughs> That's crazy. It must have just come off because this rocket has no glue. So it probably flew off on the way up or down. And But I got it back with the altimeter, 831 feet. <laughs> so that's really what I want it back. And I found the fin can to the Dragonite. And it is only that far away from the car or in the launch pad. And that explains why that thing drifted so far. It didn't have the weight of the fin can and the motor under it to bring it straight down, so it drifted way. I just thought I'd show an overhead map and some distance on where my Dragonite rocket landed after losing its fin can. I was set up right on this spot right here where this dark piece of asphalt meets the rest of the gravel here right on the corner. And the finless Dragonite landed in the middle of Guadalupe Road in the left in the center turn divide. So just to give you an idea of how far that was, it drifted a thousand seventy one feet. And I found the fin can right if I can get past this pickleball thing, right about here. So the Fin can landed probably, let's just say, 150 feet away from me, and the rest of it went a thousand, over a thousand feet without the weight of the fin can and the motor to bring that thing down with a, a parachute that had a spill hole cut into it. Always interesting, each takeoff and landing. Another great day of flying.